What's up, everybody? Jeremy here again from Joy.tv. We had a pretty amazing week as far as uh, Android's concerned, and there was a lot of good stuff that happened. Mobile World Congress took off and just gave us an onslaught of Android uh, phones and tablets, which is what we're here today. If you didn't have a good, uh, if you didn't have a good Valentine's, well, don't worry. Android's got you covered. We got plenty of love for you, so check it out. First up is we're going to talk about the LG Optimus 3D. The Optimus 3D is pretty much the phone to beat for me right now. I know I just said it was a Samsung Galaxy S2, and then LG came back and just left hooked it, I guess, because, oh uh, man, they blindsided me with this one. We knew about the phone. As I said before, the 3D wasn't really an issue, or it wasn't something that I really cared about before, because something about the 3D on your phone really didn't do anything for me. But the phone itself is apparently pretty sick. So it's loaded with a 1 gig dual core OMAP4 processor, which as of right now, apparently is smoking NVIDIA as far as benchmarks are concerned. That's pretty interesting to me. Um, I'm really looking to seeing what's going on with that. But the phone itself is also capable of full 3D recording, uh, sharing, and viewing. So it's a uh, going to be a pretty much a, an onslaught of 3D. And apparently they partnered up with YouTube to create a new three, a YouTube 3D channel, which we should be seeing sometime pretty soon. This is going to be the premier phone partner, and uh, well, I'm kind of curious as to what happens. As I said, I'm not really worried. I'm not really overly concerned about 3D right now, but apparently the the capability just enhances the phone overall. Uh, the the user interface, everything is just kind of brought to life because of the 3D, based on the 3D aspect, even when it's not running in 3D. So I've heard nothing but great reviews so far. And I'm looking forward to putting my hands on it myself and see what I think about it firsthand. But the phone has a dual five megapixel stereoscopic cameras, like just like the Optimus Pad. Uh, it's got full 1080p recording, does a 720 3D, a display is also going to be in, uh, this display is a 4.3 inch WVGA, which is glasses free 3D, it'll uh, dem it'll process it in three or 720p for 3D, and then uh, you can export out via HDMI to in full 1080, so that's pretty cool. It has uh, Android 2.2 on launch, however 2.3 will be available as soon as it's ready to go, LG has already confirmed that. Front-facing camera and 8 gig internal with 32 or 8 gigs of internal storage with 32 gig micro SD card slot available. So, looks like a pretty sick phone. I can't wait to uh, try it out. Hopefully, it'll come out for uh, Verizon. I'm hoping, but uh, you never know with any of this. The other phone that was all high on my priority list was a Galaxy S2, which happens to be the next phone. They finally confirmed everything about the phone. First off, it's got a 4.3 inch Super AMOLED Plus display. So the four and a half that we were talking about before, uh, I don't know where they got their information from, but whatever. 4.3, still a good size screen. I, I love it, love mine on my Droid, so my Droid X, can't wait to see this one. Dual core processor. It is unknown still whether it's the, gonna be the Nvidia or if it's gonna be the Samsung Exynos. The way it goes right now, it could be both, honestly, depending on, the Exynos isn't, supposed to go into production until next month. Depending on when they release the phone, that's what's going to pretty much determine however what it's going to happen as far as when we when what kind of processor you get. And apparently it could also be also in regards to what part of the world you are too. What more information is to come on that, that but that's what I'm hearing as of right now. And it's going to have HSPA plus so that puts us at T Mobile and ATT. My money is on T Mobile just because they've always started the Google on the Google uh, experience when it's back from the Nexus G or from the the Google G1, but hopefully, hopefully it'll hold true with the rest of the Galaxy phones and it'll come out to all the carriers as well. The One of the key features that I liked about this phone was TouchWiz 4.0. From what I saw on everything, it is a, the the graphics, the, the user interface just looks so much cleaner. It just, I like the way they have it. There's a widget drawer that you can add stuff much easier. It seemed a lot cleaner. However, there are reports that is already starting that there's, filing issues and the way it processes all the all the files that creates lag times on the phone itself. Now, one thing to remember, what they saw over at Barcelona was in fact just a prototype phone. It wasn't the actual full thing running, so I'm sure TouchWiz 4.0 will be much better by the time that comes. I'm I never liked TouchWiz to begin with, so the fact that I'm saying this is a is a big plus cuz it really looked pretty clean. So I'll, I'm impressed, but I'll reserve judgment until I actually see it hands on. The battery inside will be a 1650 a 1650 milliampere hour battery. So between that with the Samsung or with the Super AMOLED Plus display, you should have plenty of battery time for either standby time and talk time, and just that's for power users too. 
The phone is 8.49 millimeters, which will make it officially the, the thinnest smartphone available, even beating out the Xperia Arc. And if you check out our video, you can see that thing is tiny. I mean, that thing is thin. You just, it, it's ridiculous how, how thin that phone is. And it weighs in at 116 grams, which uh, is pretty light as well. The, as I said, it's got 1080p recording uh, and has a new thing called the voice, a new feature called the voice commander, which is you can do your memos, your driving, uh, your driving directions, driving modes, and also translators. You speak into the phone and it'll translate for you. And there's a, a lot of voice activated responses. So uh, that should be a pretty good feature as well. Samsung will also be bringing out Game Hub and they'll be basically gaming on the clouds, what it's uh, pretty much doing. So, or is pretty much the experience. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what Samsung brings out for that. And then finally, we'll have the Microsoft Active Sync, so you can combine uh, all your office files and everything like that and bring them out so that, because they're really gearing these phones also towards business clients. So the security features will be enhanced in numerous different ways. They went on and on about how secure this thing, how secure this phone's going to be, which also concerns me because if you're that secure, that puts me, that puts me in the category, or it makes me wonder if you're going to lock the bootloader. The biggest thing about the Galaxy S phones has been always been the fact that it's been unlocked and it's been you're able to do what you want to do to it. With all the security features that they're talking about, I don't see how that's going to be possible, but maybe Samsung can pull a rabbit out of the hat and, I don't know, we'll see if it still actually happens. So, I'm looking forward to seeing more about that as well. Other phones that were available uh, that came out, it was going to be the ZTE. A Chinese company is bringing out a phone called the Skate, which is kind of like a... It seems kind of like a cheaper version of the Droid X. I, I don't know. It's going to be their flagship phone. And uh, given the sum of the specs, they're not exactly power user specs or by other, by any means high end. However, they aren't exactly low end either. Um, I'm really hoping that they're trying to do pull a Huawei and bring out a more budget oriented phone so that you can uh, do a lot of or just come out to the masses and just give people what they want. Uh, so uh, I don't know. But the specs are a 4.3 inch display. It's got Android 2.3 on it. It'll have an 800 megahertz processor with the Adreno, G, uh, Adreno 200 GPU. So the processor may not be that bad with the Adreno 200 GPU. We're probably looking at some pretty high-end specs. We're capable of some pretty good graphics. So it'll be interesting to see what their, the phone is actually capable of. It'll have a 5 megapixel camera. It'll have Bluetooth, the G sensor, GPS compass, and uh, also a, it'll be a GSM phone sometime in, that should be available sometime in May worldwide. So once again, AT and T, T Mobile, something to look forward to. So HTC released about uh, released information on the Incredible S or the Incredible Two, and then also uh, the real things that uh, generated some buzz were the HTC Cha Cha and the Salsa. Yes, pretty much ridiculous names, uh, but. What the big thing about these was is that these were the supposed to be the, the supposed Facebook phones that everybody was hearing about. Now they're not actually Facebook phones, but what they are is they have a new embedded button for Facebook that is a uh, on the actual phone itself. They basically, if you come across information or any any kind of site or anything that's shareable via Facebook, it's going to glow at you and say, "Hey, go ahead and share it." And all you have to do is push the button. You're done. You're on your way to sharing it. So um, it'll have Android 2.3.3. So gingerbread's gonna be loaded on the phones. Uh, the Cha Cha's display is a 2.6 inch 480 by 320 uh, landscape display, and the Salsa is gonna have a 3.4 inch same resolution display. The phones are pretty small, and obviously by the pics, to me they look like motor like the the, Sal the Cha Cha looks like a Motorola Charm. So I don't know if they're just trying to copy that and then add a Facebook feature, but. Other specs are they both have five megapixel rear facing cameras and they all, with LED flash. They have a VGA front facing camera and also GPS compass and G sensors. Nothing really extravagant about extravagant about these phones. However, the where I do see that they could have a really big uh, hit on their hands is the fact that if they put their price point low enough, then this is gonna you can every kid on the every kid around is gonna probably gonna have one. Can given how popular Facebook is, it's it's bound to do really well if the price point is at the right place. I mean. It, if it's a low end or a cheap phone, then you're you're not gonna have you're gonna have kids coming after you all the time. Your kids will be asking you where you're. Where, hey, dad, can I or mom, can I get this phone? Because it's got the Facebook integration and it's just gonna make it easier. So should be interesting. That phone is uh, scheduled to come out to both phones are supposed to come to AT and T later this year. Um, looks like AT and T's got some pretty big uh, phones coming towards them as far as popularity. So 
We'll see what happens. The other big news of the whole show is going to be obviously Sony. Sony has been having the Sony Xperia Play has been or the PlayStation phone has been rumored about for I don't know how many months now. It's been so long. Everybody's been wanting to know more about this phone. Well, f Sony finally came out with it. The Sony Xperia Play is a 4.0 inch or I'm sorry, a 4 inch FW VGA multi touch capacitive screen with a 480 by 5 or 854 resolution. The it has a five megapixel rear camera, it has sliding, uh, sliding a slide out keyboard. It's not really a keyboard. It's the D pad control pad, uh, full on PlayStation controls, uh, X, the X circle, square, triangle, you know, D pad controls. It has a one gigahertz Snapdragon processor with an Adreno GPU also, and it is capable of sixty frames per second, which is pretty impressive for a phone. So this is place or Sony was really looking forward to or was looking to blur the lines between the phone and PlayStation and looks like they've done a pretty good job so far. The phone is supposed to be available sometime this March and we know that it's coming to Verizon. We just don't know when if it will release in March or if it'll be sometime this spring. Either way, spring at the latest, so hopefully Verizon is able to kick that phone out. Um, in the box we'll have an eight gig micro SD card and it's capable of up to a thirty two and of course it runs Android. All three phones actually were announced and will be running and we'll be coming with gingerbread uh, Android 2.3 so the pro geared more towards office or the business oriented folks has a, an office suite pro preloaded on the on the phone itself has a slide out keyboard with type and send and apparently what this is it's an interesting concept because apparently it's gonna learn your uh, techniques or whatever and when you slide out the keyboard you can start typing and then rather than having to generate an app or push the button to go to an app and then get started on your typing you can start typing first and it'll just go right to it interesting concept it'll also have the reality display with the bravia engine that we had that we saw on the xperia arc uh, really great if you haven't seen the video go ahead and check it out the xmor r is a a sensor for that sony has for photography that allows you to get really good shots in low light conditions good shots and good video so it's a great, great little feature. Should do really well. Has HDMI with mirroring, and the colors will be available are in a red, black, and silver. It should be available sometime at the end of quarter two. And finally, the Neo, once again running Android 2.3, has the XMOR R reality display with the uh, with the Bravia engine and also HDMI with mirroring. Not a whole lot of information was put out about that phone, but we'll have, like I said, you can see in this pictures here that the phone looks pretty cool, and it looks like it's geared more towards the photographers more than anybody else we hope you enjoyed your uh, enjoyed this video we're gonna get into tablets in the next video so stay tuned um, we'll talk to you guys later